this is the third video in the guesstimate approach and uh, till now we have seen what are the type of guesstimates what are the four filters what are the different elements in a guesstimate problem okay now uh, let's see few more strategies and pointers here okay so the i've divided these into three types of situations regarding the setting regarding the solution and regarding troubleshooting okay uh, regarding the se setting so the first thing that you need to figure out in a guesstimate is okay what is the approach i'm going to adopt all right so this slide is also going to be some sort of a revision of some of the things we have discussed and few more points on top of that okay so remember the setting remember the point about supply and demand okay and uh, once you have figured out the approach right you will uh, take some time out and start making the structure but before you figure out the structure you have to also figure out one thing which i don't call as temporal uniformity assumption okay so uh, remember the uh, flights example that we were discussing okay now if let's say you were doing it for a day right it is pertinent to know whether it's a average day or whether it's a special day right from your own uh, assumptions you can realize that okay during holiday seasons the airports are more crowded are more busy there are more flights flying out right so if i'm solving this case for a holiday versus for an average wednesday my answer is going to change right so you have to be aware of this and the way i do it is that i proactively ask the interviewer okay so can i assume it's just an average day okay and uh, there are no spikes or no dips in the demand or the supply for any reason right so instead of asking the interviewer if it's a special day i ask or i rather assert that can i assume it's an average day and only ask for a yes or no right it helps to solve it according to an average day analysis okay now the next point so these are regarding the setting once the setting is done there are few points about the solution okay the first is the tu analysis okay so let's take uh, let's go back to the previous example of cigarette consumption so my question is estimate the cigarette consumption in india okay that's it nothing more nothing less okay now in terms of time i have not mentioned what my time frame is whether it's a day a week a month or a year right so if it's not mentioned in the case that would be perhaps one of your first clarifying question what kind of a time frame am i talking about here okay sometimes something even if for a day even if the final answer is for a day you might want to do it for a month or a week and then divide it to get it to a day so let's take the example of movies if i have to estimate the number of people going to movies in a day right so not every individual goes to a movie in a day and if you're doing it from the demand side perspective if and uh, let's say you solve it in a way that uh, you assume that most people go for a movie once a month okay so you're doing one per 30 days but your final time period is one day so you will essentially divide it by 1 by 30 to get it to this if you were solving this case for a day to begin with it will be far more complicated so you are getting it to a standard consumption pattern and then just multiplying it by a fraction to get to the time unit that you need okay so remember to ask for the time period and remember this strategy okay now the second part is unit now in terms of cigarette consumption right i have not mentioned what my final answer is going to be okay so when i say estimate the cigarette consumption in india am i talking in terms of rupees am i talking in terms of packs am i talking in terms of individual sticks right what exactly am i talking about here so you need to know what unit you are presenting your answer in before you proceed okay so remember the tu analysis we've already discussed the nature of the user so you have to figure the consumer and their pattern so to get to the consumer and also get some hints about the pattern you use the four filters 
The next is lifetime of a product or the replacement frequency. Okay. So if you have to estimate the number of, so this will not be uh, applicable to all the products, but uh, for products which are consumed more rarely, okay, capital goods, uh, more expensive goods which are consumed more rarely. So your cars, your refrigerators, your AC, stuff like that, okay. So let's say I have to estimate the number of cars that are sold in Delhi next year. So my demand will come from two areas. One is new users who have never owned a car before, right? And the other will be old users who are trying to replace. The way you use the strategy is, let's say the old users, uh, the number of old cars on the road, let's say are 1 lakh. Okay. Now, what you do is you make an assumption that, okay, my age of the maximum age of the car would be roughly 10 years. Okay. People usually replace their car in 10 years. Okay. So that would mean that out of the uh, 1 lakh cars that are applying on the road, I can assume that 100,000 cars are there for each of these 10 years. So 100,000 cars are new, 100,000 cars are 2 years old, 100,000 cars are 3 years old and things like that. So this year 100,000 cars that is 1 lakh by 10 are going to reach the 10 year mark okay so they need to be replaced so i'll straight away get this number the old users will require 100,000 cars obviously this guesstimate is more complicated but i'm only focusing on the part of replacement frequency right if instead of 10 this was 20 then this will become 1 lakh by 20 it will become oh sorry my bad uh, this was supposed to be 10 lakh so 10 lakh divided by 10 will give me 100,000 or 1 lakh uh, now in uh, in this case I'm assuming 10 lakh and 20 so this will become 50,000 okay so the error I made right here uh, is known as a zero error right and this is a specific way that you can avoid this okay so uh, do check out my video on thoughts on numbers or uh, and you can figure out the way you can actually avoid making such mistakes while dealing with numbers okay so uh, this is a point about the replacement frequency okay uh, the next point is about peak time analysis okay now this is important okay uh, so like uh, if you look at the video of Rajiv Chok metro station or if you look at the video of the number of flights flying out of Delhi you know that uh, and from your own experience you can figure out that in a day the infrastructure is occupied to a different extent different point of time there are certain times which are peak in which it is operating at its maximum efficiency whereas there are times when it is at low efficiency right a metro system during office hours let's say 9 uh, 8 am to 10 am in the morning and from 5 pm to 7 pm in the evening is operating at its peak capacity Whereas at 5 a.m. in the morning, it has very few people, right? So we restrict our analysis to peak time as far as possible. Because in this case, I know that I have reached a bottleneck, right? Under no circumstances can I accommodate more people, okay? So that helps. So in the, uh, in the Rajiv Chok, uh, in the flight example, what I was essentially doing was that I know that, okay, uh, my runway is the biggest bottleneck and in the peak time it's being used at 100% efficiency so I know that every flight takes about 5 minutes to clear the runway so under no circumstances can I fly more than 12 flights out of the runway in one hour out of one runway by doing the peak time analysis I was able to zero in on this 5 minutes which is the physical or the scientific limit of this runway if I was doing it for the low frequency, then I will have very dif uh, very high level of difficulty in assuming whether it's going to be 10 minutes or 15 minutes or even 20 for that matter, right? So I hope this point is clear. We do it for the peak. We do our first analysis for the peak time so that we can scientifically nail down on this point that what is that one parameter in this case five minutes, the turnaround period for a flight, which is limiting. Uh, the total amount of customers that I can deal with, right? So I essentially deal with peak uh, frequency, medium frequency and low frequency. 
so I solve for this I get my answer let's say 12 per hour now because essentially to the interviewer you have already shown what kind of analysis you can do you need not waste a lot of time on medium and low you could simply assume them to be a fraction of the peak okay so you could say that medium is two third of peak and this is one third of peak so it becomes eight and this becomes four right so this is the peak time analysis okay now occupancy rate it's just a small point right uh, in most cases never assume that uh, your systems are working at 100% efficiency so like when I was talking about the medium and the low essentially what I was doing was I was assuming that the occupancy rate of the runway now is less than 100% right so if you're talking let's say if I've had to for the going back to the movie theater example if I had to estimate the number of people going for movies and if I was solving it from the number of theaters perspective I was using that approach there is a number of theaters into number of seats they have right now I will just to show that I am a practical person and I understand how things work I will include an occupancy rate factor that I understand that even though there are 300 seats on an average only 80% of them or 60% of them are going to be occupied occupancy rate also helps you in dealing with different days so if I was talking the, about the movie uh, theater and I had to do it for a week then uh, I know that my uh, movie theater traffic is different on a Saturday than on a Monday but in a city the number of theaters are not going to change the number of shows are limited by the amount of time they have so they can't change number of seats physically can't change so what will essentially change is the occupancy rate on a Saturday this might be 100% Whereas on a Monday, this might be 60% and on a Wednesday, this might be 30%. Okay. So the variations in the occupancy rate help me keep my analysis more clean. Okay. So that's the point about occupancy rate. And the last point is about representative sampling with adjustments. Okay. So what do I mean by this? So remember the order of magnitude check that we talked about uh, in uh, uh, a previous video. So let's say that uh, we were solving the cigarette consumption case and we figured out okay uh, for a 1.2 billion country we figured that 120 million that is 10 percent people smoke okay now i want to figure out whether this number seems okay or not okay so uh, before i get into that uh, this is regarding the troubleshooting so this can help you in two ways one is the order of magnitude check and the other is troubleshooting so i'm first discussing the order of magnitude check uh, which will relate to the troubleshooting aspect so again coming back to this so i figure from my whole analysis i use the four filters i use specific parameters i find that 120 million people smoke now i want to figure whether this makes sense or not so representative sampling is pretty straightforward uh, let's say that uh, i say i know 10 people I take 10 people as a representative sample of the people around me and I know that okay out of them three smoke so from my quick analysis 30 percent of the 30 percent of the country should be smokers this is a representative sampling aspect of it but now I'll also make adjustments okay my four filters were rural urban income gender age right now I know that as a person, so this is about me now, I'm making adjustments for myself. I am an urban person, okay? And we figured that urban people tend to smoke cigarettes more, okay? So probably three is an overestimation. In terms of income groups, I come from a certain income category where the tendency to smoke for people is again more. Gender most of the 10 people that I have considered and in fact in this case also the most of the 10 people I have considered are from that income category most of the 10 people I have considered are from that urban group and most of the 10 people that I know are males okay so again they have a higher tendency to smoke and in terms of age I am 24 so most of the people that I have taken are in that age group so again the tendency to smoke is higher so I would say on all four parameters it seems that my sample is not representative really 
and it gives giving me an overestimated answer so perhaps i will reduce this i will say okay instead of 30% probably 15% is more realistic or even 10% or 8% whatever it is whatever you want to say right it's the process that you have to highlight the number doesn't really matter and then you can say okay if i was taking 15% then my answer from my quick order of magnitude check is 180 million which is quite close to my 120 million so it seems that my analysis is proper okay so this is how representative sampling with adjustment can help you figure out the order of magnitude or the sanity check as some people like to call it uh in terms of troubleshooting we discussed that guesstimates are basically driven by assumptions right so in some case if you have to assume something and you can't think of any logic at all right then you can go for this representative sampling with adjustment as a hail mary measure you can just say to the interviewer okay so uh, i am just assuming this number on the basis of the group that i have so out of the 10 people i know two avail these services but because i belong to certain categories i think two is an overestimation so i will make it 1.5 okay so it could be for anything at all but remember this point that it could also help in troubleshooting to make an assumption when you can't think of anything else okay so i hope these strategies and pointers really help you solve a guesstimate better best of luck look at the other videos in the channel for other elements of your case study preparation thank you